So uh, it's very interesting, actually, that you say that you skip the solidity, the foundation part, like the solidity, the hardest, and you jumped right into to, even the the vulnerabilities. You didn't learn about like common uh, pitfalls and like common like vulnerabilities in smart contracts. You just that jumped into challenges and started like trying. Uh, learn it like in the practical way, in the hard way, but this is actually the best way. So it's very interesting. I never like heard, usually I recommend people to go through Solidity, uh, some frameworks, hard at Foundry, and then maybe try some challenges or learn about attacks. But it's interesting that you did some kind of shortcut and that's why you were able to grasp things so fast. Uh, so it was both good and bad because like it's good in the short term, like you I may grasp some stuff a little earlier than you're supposed to and stuff like that. But it doesn't like uh, provide you with a foundation, uh, which was something that I needed to return after to return to after I like learned about uh, some co- concepts that I needed to learn afterwards, like uh, after learning the basics. So I like started doing that uh, then vulnerable DeFi challenge and uh, didn't know much of the like the attacks that need to be done so i uh like checked the challenge uh like looked at the uh description and think of a way and uh mind you this is before i even knew what the entrance is uh then i essentially searched it up checked how something like that needs to be solved and uh like little by little grasped all of the concepts that were in the uh, like the whole challenge solution. So I believe like the first challenge was some sort of a reentrancy or something. So I like checked the video. It was like, how do you solve that? Uh, I you mean my mine, mine video? Yeah, I have some uh, damn vulnerable if I yeah. walk through. Yeah, yeah, may even have been yours. Yeah, could have been. Uh, I checked it out. So how the concepts work? Then like started reading blog posts about everything and uh, checking some. Uh, resources here and there, figured out what a reentrancy is, how you can enter from one function to the other, to the other function. Uh, did a couple of challenges this way, and then figured out that if I want to progress much better, I need to get a con- I need to get a solid base. So I uh, invested a few days of my life into learning how the EVM works. Like um, thinking of like the EVM as a single credit process was very helpful to me like as a developer uh because like it's actually much simpler than uh let's say like uh, some uh advanced web server architecture because you don't have any asynchronous processes you don't have any uh like uh tasks that execute periodically you don't have stuff like that you only have a single line of execution and that's it and you think about it and uh, it was much easier grasping it and i actually explained it as essentially people queuing at a line and uh, uh, like someone trying to like front run the other and stuff like that for me it was actually challenging because i came from dev and cybersecurity background to grasp the idea that it's like very different you don't have like asynchronous progresses and like things that run in the background or a uh, code can be executed only upon triggering like a transaction of a EOA account sending to a contract. For me, it was a bit like odd for people that, because maybe my mindset was a bit like tied into like traditional programming and like shifting it into blockchain programming is a bit like challenging, I believe. But it's interesting to to hear that for you, it was actually not that challenging and makes more sense. Exactly, exactly. So I believe we had pretty similar experiences with it. Uh, uh, there were other like concepts which uh, felt really foreign to me because like the whole nature of the blockchain is that it's uh, pure. It doesn't have any outside information. It cannot think an endpoint and simply get the information. So like uh, naturally, uh, like uh, uh, oracles were something very strange for me. Yeah. It's also it's very, very weird, like, you know, when you write an application, it doesn't matter which programming language you use, you can scrape sources outside. If it's Python, you can scrape a website, you can connect to an API, get data, but in blockchain, it's not that simple. You need, like, an Oracle service, and how Oracle works is, like, a completely different thing. There need to be a consensus, and, like, it's it's complicated. And even a concept like proxies, which is very similar to what you have in traditional uh, development, is very different here because you're using it for a completely different purpose, essentially. Like, 
there you're doing it for sanitization and stuff. And here you're doing it because of the problem with immutability. And, exactly. Uh, Problem, yeah. you can call it problem, you can call it feature. It's actually supposed to be a feature, you know, the whole thing about blockchain is like a feature, but we made it a, a problem and then made the preg- upgradable smart contracts. But this is another discussion about like uh, the decentralization of smart contracts. It's a feature only if people write close to perfect code. If it's like people like doing mistakes and stuff, it's more of a problem in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. But it, yeah. yeah. Brings a lot of its problems, but it's definitely uh, a feature here. Uh, yes, this, these things were very uh, hard for me to grasp. Um, I still struggle with some uh, like stuff regarding them, of course. Like most people, like uh, no one can know everything, of course. Uh, but uh, like trying to take everything into bite-sized chunks and not overloading yourself is really the key about it.